And you always have to be careful if you, I just say this and then we got to go, but if you're an older leader, and I don't mean older in that you're an old person, but you have led in the same environment in a while, you always have to kind of wrestle with what doesn't work. Like you say, you know, in you know, five years, the student pastor says, hey, uh, Carson, I'm going to do this giant Christmas student event. <laughs> you have a great time. <laughs> But Good you know, luck. You got to wrestle with, do you say, no, I've done that, it doesn't work? Or right. do you say, yeah. hey, that's a, you know, it's a new time, it's a new person, and maybe it will. Yeah. I think that's a, the, the a mature leader's absolute, almost biggest challenge. Hey guys, welcome to the Troy Grumman Podcast. I am uh, honored as always to get to hang out with you. And today, of course, is no exception. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and share because it does make a difference. And my book is out and I would love for you to pick up a copy. I tell you what, you can go to Amazon. Amazon actually is selling the book cheaper than we can. That's crazy. Come on. But uh, you can pick that up and leave a review. It, uh, it helps out a whole lot. And we do a live stream on Sunday nights. Just have a lot of fun. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think we may be the most generous program on the web. You've said it with confidence other times. I think it, you well, stick with that. Dr. Beast gave away a million dollars. That's doctor. <laughs> he just upgraded him. Most people call him Mr. But yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, everybody's got to continue to improve, grow. Amen. And uh, anyways, I have my uh, co-host here. Yes. Luke, it's Carson Gramling is with us. And I thought, you know, since one of the things we want to do is we want to partner with you. We want to create community. We want, you know, to reach our potential, be everything that God's created us to be. That's really why we're here, right? Um, that's the reason we wrote the book. And so I thought, you know, kind of modeling mentorship. I thought you just might introduce our guest. Oh, I don't want to give. Great. I don't want to give you anything too different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just introduction. Uh, well, don't screw it up because they're sensitive. <laughs> okay, I'll do my best. Right in front of me, we have the one and only Pastor Leslie in the building today, who is on staff here at Potential Church. That's, that's all you got. <laughs> Are have we like announced? No, we have position. No, well, I was going to say what they do, but I'm like, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that yet. Because yeah, it's in the middle of a transition. Yeah, so. Okay, and I just want to make sure I could say it. And I'm not. Well, have you been to a recent staff meeting? Well, yes, but more than staff watches this. I hope. Oh, that's true. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> so, officially, then your title is Next Steps Pastor. Next Steps Pastor. Yes. Pardon. Mm -hmm. All right. Great introduction. <laughs> We have another guest. <laughs> that we do. We have Pastor Brad, who is uh, our elementary uh, pastor. So that goes from first grade all the way up till fifth grade. Is that incorrect? It's kindergarten through fifth grade. Kindergarten through fifth grade. I forget about the kindergartners. <laughs> They're irrelevant. Yeah. Your nephew's a kindergartner. Like, that he is. Like that he is. But really, kindergarten is just like, hey, you're you're just about there until it really starts mattering. You know what I mean? No. I don't know what I mean either. I'm just, you're letting me ramble and I'm doing it. Yes, that was that was a great job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I do want to welcome our guests. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, that didn't sound very sincere. <laughs> we are going to talk about what we always talk about. We talk about leadership and talk about potential, but in the context of an event we have coming up just around the corner. And uh, so first of all, what would, which of you guys would want to tell us what it is that's going to be happening really soon? Well, we have a trunk or treat coming up on October 31st. Super excited. It's actually our biggest event that we do all year. And it's one that we uh, spend a lot of time preparing for, but it's two hours of excitement and it's over, but it's a lot of fun. So it's called trunk or treat. Trunk or treat. And it happens on Halloween. On Halloween. Which, what's the date of Halloween? October 31st. <laughs> Very good. Just testing, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. But uh, but anyways, you brought some pictures along, and I thought we'd start there so people kind of have a concept of what we're talking yes. about. 
So tell us what that first picture is. Okay, so for those that don't know, when we decorate a trunk, they back up their car and they decorate it with different things. So this one, um, I think that's actually Cohen. Yeah, that's Cohen and his mom, and they decorated like uh, pirates. So each one throughout the parking lot, all the trunks are decorated. Uh, so the people come mm -hmm. and they decorate their trunk. And yep. so instead of going to homes, they just kind of get to go. Yep. They walk through the parking lot and they get candy. It's a lot faster to get candy that way. Yes, it is. <laughs> what else you got? Ah, oh, there's our Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. Now, why would we have a Santa Claus at Halloween? Someone has an infatuation <laughs> with Christmas. We won't name names. That, but someone. Come on, that is a great costume. That it is. It looks hot. Mm -hmm. as, as, warm, as the person who was Santa, wearing, here's what's, the jacket is hot. But you know, there's a lot of things in life that are warm. <laughs> South Florida. But you want, I was going to say October in South Florida. The beard, the hat, and the wig are because you're just covered up from head all the way to your toe and that is really and you're talking and you know it's so funny because you know we basically kind of take pictures and invite people to our Christmas services because hey, think about it normally we start Christmas just two weeks later now this year it's a little bit different because we're going to be doing a Thanksgiving service and all that but so you're shaking hands and you're taking pictures series what I say service you said that a few times I and I just want everyone to be able to Right. Aware. Because people are going to be expecting turkey and stuff. And yeah. It's a series. But anyways, um, you could, have you ever noticed, have you ever worn a mask? Because what happens in that beard, nobody can really see my face. They can see my eyes. But I find myself smiling. Mm. Like at the end of the night, because it's two hours, you know, taking pictures and smiling. At the end of the night, my jaws are tired. Yeah. I I, I know what you're saying. So there's, uh, it's kind of like for those who have checked out SNL right our our live stream that we do sunday nights we have a voice changer and anytime we go into soul session it's a deep voice that kind of you know introduces that segment but yeah you still do a deep voice even though the voice changer is doing it all you don't have to do anything <laughs> uh, but you still do right. you change your voice um you want me to, to match <laughs> i'd love to because you know it was an advertisement for gotcha it's time for well you say that part it's time for so <laughs> that good. It doesn't. You're right. We need the voice changer. Right. They have to come on Sunday night to get that. Anyways, we're talking <laughs> about truck or treat as yes. we have all kinds of now, is there normally a theme or no? No, I mean last year we did something fun. We each kind of row of trunks, we gave them a theme. So like superheroes or Christmas was a, a row, so um, but really people get to choose their own their own theme. They just let us know, and Ooh, there's some funny that. pictures sliding through <laughs> right right there. That was actually um, my very first trunk or treat at our Cooper City campus. We wow. were Simon and Alvin. That's Pastor Iris. Simon and Alvin, the chipmunks. Yep. Wow, can you talk like a chipmunk? No. You could with a voice changer. That we could. Yeah. That we could. I just to, because I don't know if it's been said yet, to give people that, you know, kind of picture of what this looks like. There are thousands and thousands of people going through this. Right. Yeah. So it may sound like, you know, you're thinking like, oh, there's, you know, a couple trunks yeah. and like some, yeah. but this is, I mean, you know, upwards of anywhere between 50 to 100 different trunks decorated, taking up an entire parking lot with thousands of people um, going through to see these different things. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the teams, the serve teams really get creative. This one is Mario Kart. Um, we introduced a couple years ago, uh, instead of just like a trunk, experiences. Um, you know, I'll give honor to Pastor Matt for helping us develop that because his is always an experience. But the experiences take up more space and people can navigate through it. This one, they can actually go through um, their little Mario Kart. So they get I, really creative. I saw one with a boat. Can, well, where to? Yeah, I think that. Yeah. Yeah, that one, I think, yeah, that one was Pastor Matt's. That one was... Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Pirates I believe. Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. Did he win anything? Not that year, actually. That, that year he lost uh, to uh, Monopoly. Yeah. I believe. Uh, so the finance team. So we'll have to find a picture of Monopoly and stick it up on the for you guys watching so you can <laughs> see who 
you've seen the loser. Now we want you to see Correct. <laughs> Correct. Now, see, now we'll discover if Pastor Matt actually watches the podcast. So he'll say something. He'll, uh, he'll feel a type of way about that yeah. if he if he saw it. Yeah. So we uh, leave a comment below, Pastor Matt, if you. Uh... <laughs> uh, but anyways, we want to talk about. So, like you said, there are first of all a lot of trunks. Yeah. Okay, and we give away candy. So, like, how much candy do we normally need to give away? <laughs> Anywhere, depending on the amount of people who come. Um, you know, through COVID and things like that, it looked a little different. Rain can obviously be, a, you know, a bit of a hindrance. But typically anywhere between 600,000 to upwards of a million pieces of candy. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of candy. A lot of candy. Yeah, that's a lot of money candy. to, to right. purchase all that candy. So, Brad, what do we, what do we, well, this is, you're going to be your first, uh, is this your first trunk or treat or were you here last year? I was here last year. Uh, what'd you dress up at? Uh. I would. I dressed up as a parking attendant last year because I had <laughs> the parking team. It was. We were fairly new still, so. So uh, a lot of we cars. didn't trust them to do. Yeah. But, well, that's that's the motor park cars. So that's the most. Uh, that's where I started. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Back when no one trusted you, throw them in the parking lot. <laughs> no, but this guy's it weird. Takes a lot of skill in the parking lot because you're talking about expensive cars. Um, I'm being told by the producer something. But he forgets. I have my contacts. <laughs> uh, how do you get? I think what he's trying to get at is, <laughs> Pastor Brad, how do you get kids excited? Right. Ultimately, if you want tr trunk or treat to be successful, you need parents to know about it. Mm -hmm. We do within Maine, and we have billboards and all that kind of stuff. Hold on, hold on. I gotta finish my question. <laughs> oh my bad. I'm sorry. I was, I, <laughs> you jumped to that, so I thought well, that's I, where you wanted to go. I thought it was important, but evidently it's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. No, I'm teasing. Teasing. So we we're talking about candy, a million pieces of candy. What kind of plant? How do we get a million pieces of candy? That's a that's a, a big, you know, ask. I mean, that's, you know, everybody pitching in. Um, we, you know, we can talk, we talk to parents, um, you know, when they check in, check out their kids. Hey, you know what? Well, we got this event coming up, truck or treat, get them excited. We cast the vision of, we want to have as much candy for as many kids. We never want a kid to look in their bag and be like, oh, I didn't get as much as I thought. Um, you can spot, like we could get business because they could sponsor, you know, and, and send bags. You know, you go on Amazon and just, hey, I'm going to order a few bags of candy, send it to the church. You know, it's any way you can help, you know, we'll take all the candy that, that we can get. <laughs> I think that's a lot of times the things that people underestimate. Because like you said, in a moment, we're going to talk about how do you get the kids and the parents and the volunteers and stuff. But like any ministry, you know, you kind of have that same formula in the sense that, and it's children. So in some ways, people are more apt to, you know, be passionate about kids. But you think about candy, everybody, at the, candy one is expensive. A lot more expensive. Unless you buy candy, you don't realize how expensive it is, especially good candy, yeah. you know, because we don't want to give a bunch of you know, only Tootsie Rolls. Yeah. And I would almost put Tootsie Roll right at the bottom. Uh, Tootsie Roll is one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. It's one of my favorites. I put it at the bottom just those little it, things. What is it? Is it, chocolate? is it chocolate? Is it chocolate? I don't, I don't know, know what it's nougat. It's chocolate flavored. <laughs> chocolate flavored something. <laughs> but, anyways, it's it's hard to come up with the candy. That's uh, It's expensive. It takes a lot of it. And the better the candy is, the fewer there are in the packaging mm -hmm. um and so people bring a lot of candy like you were saying and you know sponsors but then there's also just a lot of money and that people don't you know you don't think about only people but just that any of us really think about the cost of putting on an event like that because you tend to think okay they're coming and they're doing their own decorating mm -hmm. right they're they're responsible for that um so you think well what expense are there but i think in ministry especially, and probably in business as well, those of you who run businesses, the amount of resources it takes to do anything is always underestimated. Absolutely. You know, like, oh, you can just, you know, I started with $25 and and maybe you did, but let's go back and look at what you did with $25. You yeah. can do what you're doing today and whatever that business is. Because because I know every year, you know, thinking through, do we want having to figure out what do we do this year? What do we not do this year? That, you know, it's always successful in the sense that thousands of people come. Um, 
but to me, the bit it's the cost that's always trying to, you know, how do we, cause the more people you have, the more candy you need, the more, um, police, you know, as far as parking and protection and then lighting is always a cost, you know? So there's always a lot of costs that people don't realize that, um, have to be funded. And I think when it comes to leadership, no matter what it is you're doing, um, you know, there's a scripture that talks about wisdom and it says, you know, who goes to war, who builds anything without first sitting down and counting the cost. And that can be, uh, I think a mistake that any leader makes is you kind of, cause he says it's very humiliating to get halfway and it not be finished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's a memorial to everybody of right. Well, I mean, you know, and I don't know if we'd want to keep this in, but the trunk or trait typically costs anywhere between 10 to $20,000. Um, and you're talking about an event where majority of what is given out was get was yeah. donated, was given, yeah. you know, I mean, that cost goes up significantly. I mean, I can only imagine somewhere between 30 to $50,000 if that was not donated and given. So it does put on the pressure because, you know, there, there's certain things where you need to find an alternative solution because doing it, you know, one way is just not, it's not doable. Right. Like to spend that amount of money on an event is really just not practical. So it forces you to, okay, well, what's another way to do it? You know, I think a lot of times when things like this come up, it's like, what does it cost to do it? Well, we can't do that. So we're not going to do it. And what's so cool about trunk or treat is it's grown so much that it's really become something that's forced us into a uncomfortable, uh, seat where it's like, okay, we, we can't, or, you know, or not even we can't, but you know, this is not going to be the wisest use of money to spend this much money on an event. So now we've got to think through alternative ways to still accomplish, but in a creative way. Mm. Yeah. Like, and I think that's, uh, the power of great, you know, our definition of creativity is to stay in the room past the first idea. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it's important to not give up too soon on an idea because yeah. it takes too many resources, whether that's money or people or, time yeah um and and you always have to ask the question like why you know why am i starting this business why am i building this house why am i why do we do this event so before we answer that question let me ask since last year was your first time and of course your perspective was a little bit uh uh different and that was what was your perspective of what happened at the event? So the first thing that I noticed um, was just the amount of people. Like, you know, we, we came from a very small town and moved here and, and we're in ministry. And we, you know, you other churches in our community back home would have truck or treats, but it would be very, you know, we'd have like maybe like 10 trucks and you expect 50, 60 families to roll through. And that was it. I was just blown away. Like, oh, we got a whole field to park cars in I was like there's no way we're gonna have this why did we even get this whole field and then by the end of the night you're like i can't put another car in this field we're gonna have to figure something out and we did but just and seeing how happy everybody was i think for the parents just them knowing this is a very safe place that i can bring my kids and they can walk through and get they they'll be happy at the end of the night i'll be the hero you know just seeing them be like okay yeah i can i can do this and i'll be the good guy and kid will be happy yeah it was it was pretty cool to watch that just yeah. to see the you know everybody was excited yeah what is uh you know because you've been involved in that how long now um it's actually my i think my 10th trunk retreat right. issue so that's a lot <laughs> how and it's been through COVID and all yeah. of that um have you seen any changes, not so much in the event, but in the the outcome or the people um, who attend, or is it more or less? Um, I would say so. I think, um, you know, one of my favorite experiences was when we did the one in 2020, and there were so many people that as they're walking through the line, they were just so glad that we did it because they were looking they were looking to get out of their house for one, but they were looking for an opportunity to bring their kids. And I think that's pretty um, much the same every year. I mean, it's a safe environment. You know, you walk around and there's 
10 FHP, you know, and it's, it's safe and it, and everyone's having a great time, like Pastor Brad mentioned. Um, but I think everyone that comes, you know, they're expecting us to do it. They're expecting it to be there. They're looking forward to getting to come to our campus and, and have that experience. Yeah. So it's a, an event with thousands of people. What's been um, some of the challenges that faced in doing the event other than the candy? We talked a little bit about getting the candy. and uh, I would say one of the challenges would be, um, well, this definitely candy is the number one, but I would say one of the challenges is just getting people involved. Um, so that they can understand the value of it. Um, I hear so often, oh, well, I don't celebrate Halloween. And I very quickly, I'm like, well, I celebrate trunk or treat. This is what we're doing. And I think when people understand the why behind why we would do an event on Halloween night, um, my favorite part is that we give a safe space, an alternative for families to bring their kids. My kids look forward to it. They've never been trick or treating before, but they get to come to trunk or treat, dress up, get candy. I mean, it really is just as simple as that. And it fulfills it all in one shot. They walk away with hundreds of pieces of candy and they get to go home. You know, mom and dad are winners that night. It'd be interesting to me to see if the folks who like don't celebrate Halloween as their reason, how involved in politics they are. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, in other words, you, you know what I mean? Because you would say, well, you need to be involved in politics because it impacts the opportunity to share the gospel or, you know, but the set to me I always think about any holiday as an opportunity and Halloween is quickly, uh, you know, catching up with Christmas, you yeah. know, especially for something that's one day event, you yeah. know, Christmas is Christmas Eve and Christmas day. And then there's new year's Eve and new year's day. So it's much more extended holiday. Um, as far as the money that's spent and the parties that happen mm -hmm. and all the, the houses now and judgment houses, so to me, it would be crazy for us as Christ followers not to, in some way, engage at interest. Yeah. I mean, the reason we have such a huge uh, crowd in the past is because people are looking. Yeah. So, you know, to me, it would be um, sad and almost, I think, an area where, uh, you know, a church can screw up is to just disengage from what's going on around them, yeah. you know, if you, to feel to speak to the world that we're not relevant to me would be to not do anything. I remember one year, years ago when I was uh, in Arkansas at this little country church, what we did, cause we, you know, cause really for the most part, we always have some students, but it's not so much a student event. It's a children's event. Um, I mean, we don't turn anybody away, but, but we did, a. Uh, I was a student pastor. So we did this student event and, uh, it was a spaghetti supper. Okay. And we had at the time, there was this guy by the name of Sean Sellers who had killed his parents and he was a devil worshiper at the time and he was in prison and he had, you know, come to Christ or, and so they had done this video and, um, and so we had, you know, free spaghetti and we had, we showed that video. Um, and kind of created a sense of Halloween around it, you know, cause it's, there's this devil worshiper and, and all of that. And we had, you know, for the little town, and again, this was out in the country kind of church and we had like 400 kids there. Um, cause again, they were looking, they're looking for something to be a part of. I know one year we did like, a, I don't know what you'd call it. Scare house, you know? Yeah. I, what'd we call it? Haunted house. A haunted house. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, wanted to do something specific with those teenagers. Um, and so we poured more, you know, when you, I, it's funny, you were mentioning earlier about figure the cost before you start. We did not figure the cost, <laughs> um, not financially, but time and energy it was going to take to get this done. Um, if you've ever been to a haunted house before, man, let me tell you, there is some, those are skilled individuals is what I learned. Those are not just anybody, but you know, it's, it's funny because, we haven't done it since. And we always talk about it every year, but I do think that there's been a valuable lesson for us in the sense that it was successful, but it was, it's not the right time. Um, it always felt like it pulled away from trunk or treat and trunk or treat is just impacting more families. You know, sometimes I think that whether you're in ministry or you're leading a company, whatever it may be, you have two good options. You know, a lot of times we think about decision-making 
there's a good decision and a bad one, but sometimes there's two good options, but one of them is it's the right time for, and one of them it's not. And so for us, that's kind of been the learning is like, okay, right now is not the time um, for the haunted house. And let me tell you, I'm not losing sleep over that either. <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun. We did a, uh, uh, when I was in Arkansas, uh, yes, my wife and I, if you don't know, had a start of the church there years ago. And uh, we did a judgment house. Oh, and uh, sending people to hell. Yeah. <laughs> but again, we had, uh, you know, a few hundred kids in this small town that, that came through it. But it was a, a lot of, uh, it was a lot of, it's kind of like a live nativity, you know what I mean? In the sense that it's just taking advantage of opportunities yeah. that are provided. What's one of the things that, you know, Brad was sharing what he experienced in that first one. What's one of the things, let's everybody kind of think here for a moment. When you th think back on this event, what's uh, a word or two you'd use to describe it? You know, either the event itself or how people respond to it or. Uh, for me, which is going to sound in crazy because of how many people, but I would say smooth. We've been really, really blessed um, over the years that it always runs smoothly, even though, you know, there's some things behind the scenes that maybe we may be dealing with or whatnot. But I think that the guest, the experience that they have year after year is it really removes the stress and it just feels like a smooth experience from beginning to end. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I think, you know, just kind of going along with that, I think the, the cool thing is that they get to experience potential within an event. They don't, they, it's, they don't necessarily have to come to a weekend service to experience the local church. And so I think that's what's cool about it is it's just, it's fun. It's loving, it's carefree, it's positive. It's everyone's happy. It's, we're just out there to have a good time. Yeah, I think for me, it's it's investment. You know, it shows the community that we're, hey, we're not just asking you to show up on a weekend just to come to church. We're we're investing in your family. We're investing in your kids. We're providing you a safe place. We're letting you be the hero. And we, we just want to make, like Pastor Carson said, we just want to make everything smooth for you so you guys can have fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things, too. You always have new volunteers. And they're always happy after the fact because you're the good guy. You're giving out candy. You're being a normal, you know, what's a normal believer look like? You're <laughs> able to do that. And uh, and it takes a ton more. Again, just like it takes a lot of candy and takes a lot of resources. It takes a lot of volunteers, Yeah, you know, that people yeah. don't see, you know, whether they're running candy or filling up candy or lights or the DJ or all the trunks. And I'd encourage anybody watching who's in the area if you'd like to be a part of it, um, be sure. And I'm sure there's a link where you can uh, contact us and we will put you to work, whether it's hauling candy or whether it is uh, having a truck or maybe you're somewhere else and you just want to be a part of loving on this community here in South Florida. You know, it's um, and you can sponsor a truck, you know, and uh, purchase some candy as yeah. well yeah. and and uh, help us uh, help us in that way. But hopefully, you know, uh that it would inspire you, no matter what it is that you do, to stretch, right? Every year, this is just one of the events that we do that is stretching. It stretches us to have more volunteers because Halloween, whenever it falls, it either falls at the end of a weekend or at the beginning of a weekend. And you, you have to do these things in, you know, you're still doing what you do. Mm -hmm. Ministry doesn't stop, mm -hmm. you know? It's like this week we have a, a men's and women's event, but we also have the weekend and we have uh, the children's ministry and we have the school and we have all this stuff going on. And so it's a stretch, but um, I think that's how you grow. You know, you stretch your muscles, you grow, you stretch um, your, um, your thinking and you grow. And I think the same way as, and uh, these kind of events, so I just encourage you, if you're going to reach your potential, don't be afraid to stretch. Yeah. Don't be afraid to take a risk. And, you know, some of these events or things that you do are going to fail. You know, not every event is a trunk or treat. Yeah, <laughs> you know, some of them, whew, 
I've, 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 I've ran a few of those. <laughs> I think we've all had a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, so he had a barbecue that Carson led. But... <laughs> yep, Christmas for the past four years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, students and Christmas are not the, um, but you you don't know, right? And you got to try. And you always have to be careful. If you, I just say this and then we got to go. But if you're an older leader, and I don't mean older in that you're an old person, but you have led in the same environment in a while mm -hmm. you always have to kind of wrestle with what doesn't work like you say you know in you know five years the student pastor says hey uh carson i'm gonna do this giant christmas student <laughs> event you have a great time <laughs> <laughs> but good you know, luck you got to wrestle with do you say no i've done that it doesn't work or right say yeah, like, that's you know, it's a new time it's a new person and maybe it will yeah. I think that's a, the, the a mature leaders absolutely almost biggest challenge because you can be you know it says new wine comes and new wine skins you know you can I heard a song the other weekend about that very phrase but I don't think you were in there when the, I don't think Danny I, he wasn't in there was he uh, Carson when we heard a song about the new wine skins. <laughs> But you got to be I careful. feel like I'm in the middle of something. Yeah. I'm just uh, <laughs> different language. Well, everybody is. Like, yeah. This, yeah. this okay. is the key to communication. You talk to millions of people about something they know nothing about, <laughs> yeah. except for one other person. There you go. Anyways, <laughs> hey, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And again, if nothing else, I hope we've inspired you to stretch yep. and become everything you were created to be. Because after all, our goal is always to help you reach your potential your potential it's the reason we wrote the book it's the reason we do the podcast the live stream the weekend services if you want to check out the teaching you can always go to potentialchurch.com and uh, find it there attend one of our online services we would love we would love to have you and um this is on all the platforms so if you listen to it you can actually go and watch it and if you watched it and you didn't finish you can switch over to the audio version and catch it there as well Hey, we'll see you guys later. God bless and have an incredible day.